now currently, and I want to give a special thank you to Larry Ham. None of this would be possible. What happened on Tuesday night would not be possible. <laughs> I am so, so grateful. Um, I'm extremely grateful for all of you in here right now. Um, it is truly, truly thanks to People Power that I am here right now. And um, I just want to tell you all a little bit about my story. Uh, I was born in Newark. I was born at St. Michael's Hospital. Wow. And uh, my parents uh, are immigrants to this country. They wanted to seek the best education for me possible, so they worked very hard to uh, pay rent in, in houses and in Livingston, New Jersey, and that's where I got my formal education. Um, and that's where I, I went to public schools. Growing up in Livingston, I, I was marginalized a lot, being a first-generation immigrant and uh, starting school speaking only Spanish. And my peers definitely marginalized me. My teachers, in a lot of ways, did not support me. Um, and growing up there was, was a very difficult process for me. My educational autobiography really, really speaks to what I do today as an educator. And I've always um, aspired to be the teacher that I never had in a lot of ways. Mm. So uh, let's just start off with talking a little bit about how I pursued being a teacher. I decided to be a teacher my senior year of high school after doing the senior service program. Now, I had no intentions of being a teacher. I hated, <laughs> I hated school, to be completely honest. And my senior year of high school, I did a senior service program where I went to the elementary schools in Livingston and worked with the, the elementary school students. I fell in love with the idea of a classroom. I fell in love with the idea of, of having so many students um, look up to you for guidance and um, I decided to be a teacher after doing that program. I went to Montclair State University, got my certification and graduated with, uh, with honors, magna cum laude. I decided to pursue more education. Um, I wanted to be the best equipped for my students as possible. So I went to pursue a master's of education um, in curriculum and teaching at Teachers College, Columbia University. And I graduated there also with a 3.9 average and I finally felt ready to teach my children. After graduating from Teachers College, I was, I was subbing while in grad school at Orange, um, in Orange and also in Jersey City. Yeah. And uh, I fell in love with the familial feel in Orange, and I felt as if the students were very close. Everybody knew everybody. It was a, it was a very small community, and it was, it was a beautiful community. The parents were supportive. The teachers were very loving and, and endearing. And I got a call towards the end of May um, that I was going in for an interview at Forest Street School with Miss Cook, the principal. And she uh, interviewed me and hired me the day of, and I was ecstatic. Um, that was my first interview for my first teaching job, and I got hired on the spot, and I took it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was hired to be a third grade English language arts and social studies teacher. I started in September of 2014, and of course, I fell in love with my students the moment they stepped into my classroom. Um, I felt as if they were my babies, and and I was ready to nurture, love, teach, and, and just have a fabulous first school year. Um, in the month of February, we did a civil rights uh, series, and we covered different civil rights leaders. Mumia Abu-Jamal was one of those leaders. And... <laughs> Mumia's case because I did not think that was the most important part to highlight. The most important part to highlight is that he is truly a leader. And uh, we spoke about a specific quote in particular by Mumia that reads, so long as one person is silenced, there is no justice. Mm. And so we discussed what that meant and we had a, a great discussion around um, how that demonstrates leadership in our communities. And the students were very intrigued by Mumia, 
and a lot of them went home and did their own research. Some of them came in the next day with pictures of Mumia, oh, wow. with um, uh, short reports of Mumia. I did not by any means ask them to do this, but they went on and, and mm, mm. being the great students and learners that they are, they took initiative and did their own research. We moved on to, to uh, talk about other civil rights leaders and, and mm. Um, in April, when Mumia became very sick and he was unable to see his family, I mentioned it to my students, and they decided they wanted to write Get Well letters to Mumia. And um, I told them, of course, there's a required curriculum in Orange um, in social studies. It's a My World Pearson textbook. And so we did our required assignments, and instead of independent reading, as they usually do, they decided to write letters to Mumia. One of my students asked me at the end, will these letters get to Mumia Abu Jamal? And I said, I'm not too sure that's going to happen, baby. And they said, well, another student raised her, their hand and they said, Ms. Zuniga, please get these letters to Mumia. And I said, I'll see what I can do. Um, I still did not think those letters would end up in Mumia's hands at that point. When I spoke to Johanna Fernandez and told her what my students had done, she was so moved that she said, those letters are gonna get to Mumia. And she um, asked me for the letters, I dropped them off, and then she delivered them that Tuesday, they were in Mumia's hands. Uh, yes. Um, many folks have, have, have referred to me as a hero. Um, I think it's just very important to highlight while I deeply appreciate and love the support, I think it's really important to highlight who the true heroes and heroes are in this situation, which are my students. Um, they took the initiative. They were, taking, they were doing critical thinking skills on a third grade level that is often done at a high school level, college level, or even graduate school level. At third grade, at ages seven and eight, they were engaging in such thought, compassion, care, kind, kindness, and, and critical thinking that is beyond anything um, that anyone could teach them. That is something that was instilled in them and that was given to them and that they are now um, implementing in their learning. So I'm very proud of them and, and most importantly, um, more than anything, I wanna see my students again and many parents have been in communication with me. I've, I've had audio tapes sent to me um, from my students telling me that they miss me and they want me back and they want to see their teacher in that classroom. And they're tired of the substitute teacher who's in there right now. Um, and that's most important. I just want to finish off with that and um, leave you all with that thought of my students wanting to see me and wanting me back in the classroom and how much I miss them. I thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. for progress for helping us for helping us make that event what it was that board meeting I don't know how many of you were there but it was life transforming I mean it's, it's Larry Ham is a long-standing civil rights leader in this town and there are other people here but this is stuff that our generation has not experienced. We talk about the power of the people, but it often sounds like this idealistic call that we never see, and we saw it. We saw it on that day. It was a moment when ordinary people took back the soul of their community. And 
I mean, this is not just about Marilyn Zuniga, although it is about Marilyn. It's, it's about taking back our communities and not allowing the police to determine how we live our lives. That's right. That was articulated over and over and over again at that event. I'm just humbled. Um, and I just, what I learned from, from that experience was that organization is key. Yes. Without organization, we would not have been able to do that work. But in addition to organization, we need to build um, bonds of trust. I remember coming to this very hall that took me like 30 minutes to get to two years ago. Right, this is where you guys invited us here and Mumia called in and Pam Africa is here and she's had a long-standing relationship with Larry Ham for 30 years and that's what made that moment possible. Um, I think that what we need to do is to go back to that community, Orange, and really raise awareness about yep. the problems in Orange, which yes, are yes, huge. Yes, yes, yes. Um, we need to educate people about who Mumia is. Yep. Yes. And we need to demonstrate to that community that what Marilyn Zuniga was, did, was what civil rights leaders that that's we right, celebrate today right. did in the 1960s. That's right, that's so, right. Like Martin Niall has a lot to say, but I just left the class. I was teaching the civil rights movement today, um, ironically. And I think we have to remember that uh, in 1967, Martin Luther King finally broke the silence on the issue of Vietnam at the Riverside Church. Yes, right. The next day, he was denounced by the Washington Post, yeah. denounced and called a traitor mm -hmm. um, by liberals. And it took courage for him to do that. Mm -hmm. Something that his wife, in fact, had been doing all along. Coretta King was an anti-war activist. She was against the war. And she was out against the war before Martin Luther King. And he finally came out in 1967. And even though he was identified as the intermediary and the player and the good Negro, um, on April 5th, 1967, he was the bad Negro for having said, spoken truth to power. So, I mean, I'm, I'm humbled because I had the opportunity to experience a taste of what revolutionary moments look like when the tables turn, when their armor um, is broken. You probably know that one of the board members, a Latino woman, mm -hmm. got up and she yes. said, if the people cannot speak, I have I'm no leaving. reason to be here. That's and, right. And that was it. That was the game changer. And then the mayor, Warren, uh, Dwayne Warren, uh, he intervened on our behalf. So I think that we have an opportunity here um, to build people's power and to show that ordinary people can transform society and in the process ensure that Marilyn Zuniga is a teacher at Forest School That's right. in right. September. That's uh, right. I think we can now. do that. And I think that we need to build an inside strategy and an outside strategy. Uh, Dwayne Warren gave me his cell phone number and we need to figure out what to do, how to talk to him in a private meeting. I also got a call from Baraka's office. Um, and I know that Larry Ham has those relationships and we have to figure out how to have meetings internally with those politicians. Yes. But we also have to keep up the pressure yes. um, at that meeting on May 12th. So I thank you because without POP, um, and without the mobilization of Brother Saeed, yes, yes. Um, mm -hmm. without those press releases that went out that morning, we would not have had that victory. So here's to ensuring that Marilyn Zuniga yes. is a teacher in September, and here's to bringing Mumia home. Thank you.
peace, everybody. Peace. Um, it's, it's a, it feels good to be here. It feels like family. So I just want to thank everybody who came out. Also want to thank, um, the, of course, the People's Organization for Progress. Yes, yes. Um, have taught me so much as a young organizer and as a young person uh, here in Newark. Um, and I think it's, it's a great thing to have elders and mentors and folks in your community uh, that you can look to and learn things about how you can change things in our community. So mm -hmm. I just want to thank that. I want to thank, of course, uh, Larry Hamm uh, mm -hmm. for your personal mentorship and also um, all the work that you've put in. I'm going to try not to be long at all, but I uh, just really want to talk about uh, two things or three things. Uh, one, I just want to just talk about a little bit of what Tuesday meant, um, or two things. One, a little bit about what Tuesday meant, the public hearing. And two, uh, if I can just give a few action items that we can all do um, yes. in yes. the following days to support Maryland uh, in a very concrete way. So as Larry mentioned, I've been to Ferguson um, to help organize the, the, the moment or the movement that's emerging out of Ferguson. I've also been in New York City and organized there in the aftermath of Eric Garner. And of course, I've been here in Newark organizing, but I do have to say, that out of all that stuff, uh, what happened Tuesday night was for me, and I, um, I told a lot of my friends this, it was a magical moment that I had never experienced. And I stood before the Ferguson Police Department. I've been in New York City marching for Eric Garner, but what happened with those hundred folks, many of you who were a part of that group um, in Orange, New Jersey, at Orange Middle School on Tuesday night, was like something I had never seen before. Um, and so I just want to acknowledge that. I think that it's really important though, the lesson that I learned is that it's something about the local. Um, you can, you know, you can be paying attention to national issues, which is important. Um, you can be on social media for those of us millennials, is also important. But there's nothing that replaces the local community coming together yep. on the ground in a grassroots way yep. to change something that's unjust. So I wrote a little status on my Facebook that I wanted to share with you. I love to write, so um, I'm going to just read it. It's not long, if you don't mind. Go ahead. If the public hearing on Tuesday I'm talking about, if the public hearing was sports, we, meaning we, the community, went in as the last seed scheduled to play an undefeated team. That's the board. Underdog is an understatement, but we practiced. And where we lacked in governmental power, we made up in grassroots people power. We showed up Tuesday night, you showed up Tuesday night, Pop showed up Tuesday night, ready to play. And that we did. Shout out to everybody who came out uh, for being unafraid to speak truth to power in the face of injustice. I think it's important for us to realize that it ain't over, but we did win on Tuesday night, and that's something to celebrate. Okay, so not to be long, a couple things that we can all do to support Maryland. Yes. Um, one thing that we can do, and if you have a pen, I suggest that you write this down. If you have a cell phone, I suggest that you uh, put it in your cell phone. One thing that we all can do, if you have access to a telephone, is to call Superintendent Ronald Lee. Yes. Um, the number is 973-677-4000. Again, 973-677-4000. When you call that number, you have to press the number 9. After pressing the number 9, you will be transferred either to his secretary or to a voicemail. And if you would just demand the immediate reinstatement of Marilyn Zuniga to her job, that is one thing that we can all do to support her. Number two. There is currently a petition circulating um, the internet. It can be found at rootsaction.org. So if you have access to the internet, you can go to rootsaction.org and you can search Marilyn's name. Her name is spelled M-A-R-Y-L-I-N. And you can access that petition. Please sign the petition and share it if you can, if you have social media accounts or if you can print them somehow, um, you know, get them out into the community and let's all sign that petition. There's 
already um, been, in the first two hours, there was over a thousand signatures. Oh, right. <laughs> over 2,000 signatures. And now I believe it's over 5,000. Wow. Um, so folks have been signing from around the country and world, and we want everyone to make sure that you can also participate in that. The last thing is the next public meeting or public hearing will be May 12th. So if we can all begin to organize ourselves, uh, to prepare for May 12th. We need everybody to come out. We need all hands on deck, and we need to make sure that the Board of Education um, it makes the right decision. So as we showed up last time, let's grow in numbers and let's grow in power so that we can continue to promote justice. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank you.